So the next thing I want to talk about is versioning. Um, so I like to think of versioning as occurring on four different levels. So you know, the first level you, is just unversioned data. Level one, you version it by taking a snapshot. Version or level two, you version basically like also providing your transformation process, I guess. And then level three might be um, a specific, like a, a machine learning specific data versioning solution. So just go through them in order. I put a big red X here because you should not do this. So what you should not do is just have your data on the file system or in S3 or in the database, uh, and you train on it, and you deploy the model, and the data changes. And then at some point in the future, you will train again. But now you can't recreate your original model because the data changed, and you didn't record that it changed. right? So the problem, if I had to formalize it, is that like every time you deploy, you have to version what you deploy. Uh, when you deploy a machine learning model, you're deploying partly the code that you wrote that generated the model, but partly the data that was used to train the model. So if you didn't version the data, then you didn't version the deployed artifact, and therefore you're, you're, you know, you're failing. So the problem you will face is that you won't be able to get back to the, like you had a model that worked, and then at some point you will not have a model that worked, and you won't be able to go back to that model that worked. So a simple thing you might do then is, OK, well, every time I train or every time I deploy, I'll just I'll, I'll take a snapshot of the data that I trained on. I'll store that somewhere. So yeah, now you can actually say that your artifact is deployed, right? because there's a git, git you know, hash for the code, and now there's a snapshot of the data. But it's like super hacky. right? Like we have the git hash of the code. We don't have a zip file of all the code that you used. So let's try to have something similar for the data and not just essentially have a zip file of all the data that you used. So that's, I think, the goal. Like, let's be able to version data just as easily as code. So level two is where we get into uh, you know, in the clear, which is we version data as, as a mix of assets and code. And what I mean by that is, like, let's say you have a you know, speech data set. So all your speech files, the WAV files, are stored in S3. Each one has a unique ID, right? Because it just has to, 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 to be in a unique place on S3. Your training data is labels on those objects. So you can think of it as a JSON file, right, where an ID is, is, is mapped to um, the label of it. And you could actually just check that JSON into your version control, right? So the problem with that might be, well, I have millions and millions of rows of data, and it's all labeled. And it's labeled in this like polygon, uh, you know, it's polygon coordinates, so it's very big, and it's this big you know, gigabytes file just for the labels. So yeah, they can get big. So git LFS is something we actually use in lab. And so basically, it's something that you add to your git repo called, it's called git large file storage. I wonder if I have a slide about this. No. Um, but basically, it, git large file storage, you basically say, if I ever commit a, let's say, JSON file to my repo, don't actually compute the, like, don't store the blob of that file in the Git folder. What you should do is, behind the scenes, upload it to S3, and then store the hash of the file and the location of that file in S3. And so Git LFS just does that for you behind the scenes. So your Python files are actually version controlled and stored as blobs, but your JSON files are actually behind the scenes uploaded to S3, and what's versioned is their contents, the, like the hash of their contents, and the location. And we can improve this even a little bit further with um, lazy data, which is a package which will basically like, let us check out a big repo where there's a bunch of large files, but not actually download them onto our local uh, copy until we actually need them. So it's like lazy loading of data. And so if we institute something like this, well then, the git signature, the hash of that raw data file, the file that has the, the ID of the, of the speech wave form and the label, that's, that's the version of the data set. So if I hash that file, that's the version of the data set. If I change something about the label or I add a new um, row in the data, the hash will change, and hence the version will change. 
And uh, additionally, maybe we want to add a timestamp also to this so that it's kind of more visible what the version actually correlates to. So level three is uh, specialized solutions for versioning data. So I put both a check mark and an X over here, and that's because I think you should avoid these until you know what the problem that you have is and can explain to yourself how using this tool will solve the problem. So the solutions that I found um, are DVC, uh, Pachyderm, and Quill. So DVC is open source version control system for machine learning projects. And uh, it tries to do a number of things. The first is version data. But the second is actually version, the transformation of data to a different form of data. So there's this concept of DVC pipelines, which uh, not as useful for deep learning, I would think, as for kind of like machine learning on tabular data. But yeah, basically, you can define how you're transforming your, let's say, CSV file to your final, like some kind of other you know, train model or interim data format, you can version that pipeline. And so then if you change any step in that pipeline, you can intelligently kind of recompute from that point. Pachyderm is a very similar thing. Version controls data. Um, and it's uh, language agnostic. So they make some claims that I don't fully understand. I should dig more into it. But it says, you know, Pachyderm takes care of triggering data sharding, parallelism, and resource management, which sounds to me like that's a lot. So are they managing my infrastructure for me at this point? And this is kind of like, this is my sticking point with these kind of specialized data solutions. They very quickly get into just managing your infrastructure for you, which you might not necessarily want. Dolt is one uh, that I liked uh, recently from a company called Liquid Data. And so they solve a problem that I haven't seen anyone else solve, which is, uh, basically, Git for databases. So if you have a database and you make some change to it, like Postgres doesn't keep a version history for you. It just overwrites the row that you changed, that you updated. You can take snapshots, and you should, so that you can roll back to something that, that worked and never lose user data. But there's not that kind of like Git graph of changes. But with, with, uh, with this dull tool, there is. So I can download a dump of a database and make some changes to it as I do my data science. Josh can download the same database and do his data science. We both make commits, and then we can merge them together. So maybe I change some rows, he changed some rows. We can identify a conflict. We can intelligently resolve them. And we can also go back to, like, oh, I got 80% performance on my version of the data, and he got 90% performance on his version of the data. Like, why is that? We can, I can now run my model in his version of the data and see what I get. So it's very useful. You guys have any questions about versioning? Cool, well, um, that I think is about four minutes left. And the last thing I want to talk about